Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guests and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief, the fastest dental podcast on the internet. Uh, Our goal is to bring you the information um, that you need to run your practice uh, as successfully as possible. Um, I'm excited to have with me today uh, Dr. Eric Jackson. Uh, Say hello, Dr. Jackson. Hey, everyone. Thanks for having me, Patrick. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. Um, Why don't you tell us a little bit about um, why you became a dentist uh, and what, what, where your passion lies within the dentistry or the dentist industry? Well, uh, let's see. So I, uh, I became a dentist. I, I graduated in 05 from University of Illinois in Chicago, and um, I'm the present owner of Jackson Family Dentistry here in Downers Grove, Illinois. Um, I've got dentistry in my roots. My father is a retired uh, orthodontist in Chicago. He practiced for his entire career uh, down by Midway Airport. And even before that, uh, my great grandfather had a uh, dental laboratory on the south side of Chicago. So it's kind of in my blood, I guess, if you would. Um, The reason I went into it is because ultimately I love the um, variety that general dentistry provides, especially modern general dentistry. Um, There's a little bit of uh, science, obviously. There's a little bit of um, business ownership. There's a little bit of marketing and advertising. There's a lot of different aspects that go into being a modern practice owner um, that I really kind of anticipated liking and, and truly love to this day. That's fantastic. Uh, so basically with the lab, we're talking three years, third generation. Uh, uh, I guess in, in some ways, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about um, messaging that we can get out to dentists and how you can help them. Um, I think we talked a bit about uh, communication being a problem, communication with patients, helping patients understand, uh, you know, what's going on in their general health and how dentistry affects that. So uh, why don't you talk to me about that a little bit and how we can uh, better serve uh, patients out there? Absolutely. Well, uh, communication is one of the pillars of my practice. We have several pillars uh, that we always try to rest everything on. And communication is one of the most important of those pillars. Uh, communication between patients, between staff, between uh, our office and other offices. Uh, but obviously, most important of those is uh, communication with patients. And that can be achieved you know, many, many different ways. Um, but we really try to make sure that there's an open and honest discussion. Uh, the days of the dentist telling you what needs to be done without any description and with any, without any reasoning or without any education, those days are behind us. Um, that's very uh, archaic dentistry. Modern dentistry uh, I like to say it deputizes the patient into being a, a, a pseudo dentist, if you will. And so that way they're able to not only understand what's happening to their body, but also gain appreciation for what you're going to do for them. And it makes everything function better. So uh, how does it benefit the, the dentist? I understand how it benefits the practice and or uh, the patient, uh, if you will, but how does it benefit the dentist? What are some problems that dentists run into with poor communication and the way that they have been communicating? Uh, and how can they make some changes to um, today to better that communication to actually benefit their practice from anything from scheduling issues to patient uh, care acceptance um, through referrals? There's a lot that goes into it. So the more you communicate across the board, the better. I mean, ultimately, just looking at what happens in the operatory, for example. I mean, it, it happens outside, too. You're, like you said, scheduling and whatnot. If they know your practice goals and the style of practice and what's your achievement, your front desk will thank you. But as far as the operatory goes, I, I really kind of not only push, you know, use the intro camera and explain, 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 but also comes down to use analogies and break it down because dentistry is very complex. It's very scientific. It's lots of chemistry and biology. But ultimately, if you have a full grasp of things, you can break it down into analogies and and and, and give patients a little bit easier taste, right? Uh, I talk a lot about um, construction analogies. There's a lot of physics involved in dentistry. There's a lot of, especially with implant dentistry, um, there's a lot to be talked about. And we talk a lot about medicine. Um, modern dentists are, are truly a 
I feel a specialty of medicine. You know, we're no longer purely on an island uh, far away from the, the field of medicine. Uh, there's some definite overlap. And we see that on a daily basis. And the more patients understand that, the better. So when did you or how do you know, uh, how do you measure your communication with your patients? How does it let us know if they're doing a good job, um, if they're doing a, a poor job or an excellent job? Uh, what are some telltale signs that there's a, a patient communication issue in a practice? Well, that- I think on, on the, I'm sorry. On the positive side, I mean, the, the patients will tell you. Um, I think by far and away that, that we hear, and I'm very proud, we take a lot of extra time with our new patient exams, our comprehensive exams, sit down and really get a good baseline uh, for the next you know, 40 years or so. And because the patient knows that you are doing an in-depth comprehensive exam, as well as telling them about it, uh, they're going to know where they go, where they stand currently and where they go forward. And the, the converse is true where, the, where you might need some work. Well, if you're having consistent issues with um, with patients in one aspect of your practice, well, th- then obviously um, either the you know the methods and modalities of your practice have to change a little bit. But once that does, once you tweak that up a little bit, well, then you're able to then communicate those tweaks to your patients. And if the question should stop, and if the communication is sufficient, and then the message is being received, you have to know your audience, of course, and know who you're speaking to, and not and every single patient is a little bit different. So you have to, you know, again, that's where this marketing comes in. Um, Knowing your audience is a very classic uh, marketing and advertising. And then knowing your patients, if the patient is receptive to tremendous amounts of data, they love to know the materials that you're going to use. Well, give it to them. If, if they don't care about that at all, if they just want to know the general concepts, well, then provide the general concepts to them. Whatever speaks to your patient's personal, individual personality is the communication that you should go with. So benefits to the dentist uh, talking about that, you know, I'm looking at, um, your online reviews, by the way, and I know this isn't something we talked about, but I'm looking at them right here. And you're, you're 60 nearly perfect reviews on Google's, which is well above uh, average. Um, I would assume that has to do with the way that you treat patients, right? The way that you care for patients and probably the way that you communicate to them. Yeah, I think it's very fair. I think ultimately it comes down to a lot of those, if you read them, uh, they're all organic and it comes down to a lot of them have the same thread. Uh, it's I really enjoyed my time. I, um, I'm surprised I liked the dental visit as much as I did. I learned a lot. I can't believe I learned something at the dentist. A lot, a lot of those are kind of commonalities there, and I'm very proud of it. So thank you. Yes. Yeah, that's that's great. Tell me, what is, how does that equate into referrals for you? What, if you if you had to try to measure or guess, or maybe you actually track it, as far as uh, patient referrals, how many um, referrals are you getting from current patients and due to uh, the communication that you practice in your office? The um, the answer is number one is 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 our number one source of referrals has always been traditional word of mouth. Right now, traditional word of mouth prior to the internet age was purely one person speaking to the other. Um, but ultimately, nowadays, word of mouth has a lot more meaning. It's not just person to person. It can be encompassing the social media. So ultimately, by far, still the all the mentalities of yesteryear, word of mouth is still most important. Um, you go on, you get nice reviews, you, you treat people well, and it comes down to if you speak to, you know, the local people. Now, I'm a, I'm a general dentist. Uh, we are comprehensive local family dentistry, right? Uh, it is a wonderful um, privilege of mine to be able to kind of lead the office into the next 40. Today, this is our 40th anniversary in 2020. And uh, of wow, the congratulations. And thank you. And so we're going to yeah. be in our, our kind of uh, 40 more years type thing. We're uh, we're, we're, we're running with that as far as uh, just like we did back in our 30th anniversary. And it's a really neat way to be part of the community. So we do a lot, like I mentioned pillars earlier, it's communication, but there's also community involvement and service projects and, and volunteerism and philanthropy. And uh, even, you know, even though that took a little bit of a hit with the whole COVID-19 shutdown and whatnot, a lot of 2020 is a little bit unique. We're still able to do a lot of that. And being able to resonate with the local uh, population. That is always our first goal. Uh, but I'm very proud that we have patients that either grew up here and then moved to Indiana and they still come back. People that you know grew up in an area and then moved to the city and still come back. And so we actually reach a lot further, if you look up at our numbers, uh, than just our traditional five mile, five, 10 mile radius around the office. Yeah, that's, that's terrific. So let's get this straight. We're talking about 
communication, better communication equals better health care for the patient, win for the patient. Communication with the patients equals more referrals and probably patients uh, staying with you for much longer. So win for the dentist. It, it just makes sense. Um, I have one tough question for you. So not everybody's good at communication. Uh, I think it's a skill that we have to work on and that we have to build. I mean, there's obviously there's undergrad and graduate programs in communication. If it was that simple, those programs wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. uh, what is what is one reference or one resource, potentially a book or an author or speaker uh, that you can recommend our audience for people who know they have communication issues and, and truly want to work on those? It's a good question. Uh, the um, I like truly it, it, there's so much out there these days. Right. So. Books, you know, I, I like Audible. I like Audible on the way to and from work um, instead of, um, you know, you go through all the different options of sports radio and you go through the options of news and whatnot. But Audible provides you an option to really tailor make your business um, aspects, your business mentality and hone those skills. Right. There's a tremendous number of options on Audible. So if you want to pop it on and drive home, that's a really good option. Um, but as far as uh, additional options besides that. Um, there's a lot. I mean, ultimately, YouTube. These days, YouTube, it'll teach you how to change your water heater out yourself. It'll teach you sure. how to do it. I mean, you can, you can truly learn almost anything on YouTube. In addition, you can learn how to communicate with patients better. And how do you do that? Well, you could actually just start your own YouTube channel and just start speaking. It's a really wonderful way to do that. Uh, but ultimately, you can also follow other people who have already done so. And so ultimately, it comes down to their between... The, there's just so many options, you know, books via Audible, YouTube, videos. But most importantly, it comes down to you have to really focus on wanting to disseminate the information that's in your brain into your patient's brain. Because the moment that happens, once you're able to achieve that, then you're going to have less questions, more understanding, less complications, probably less phone calls at night because they already know what they're going to expect. It takes a lot more on the front end. But ultimately, you reap tremendous rewards for both you and the patient and the practice in the long run. Yeah, that's great advice. And uh, those are excellent sources. Uh, to our audience, uh, check out Dr. Jackson's website. It's jacksonfamilydentistry.us. Um, feel free to check out his YouTube channel and social media as well. Dr. Jackson, I appreciate you being here very much. I appreciate you sharing with our, our audience into your uh, profession. Well, it's been a pleasure, Patrick. I appreciate the invite as well. Uh, the podcast is fantastic. I love the format. It's just down and dirty and it gets right to the point. It's wonderful. I appreciate the feedback. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search The Dental Brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com, and just follow the link. We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of The Dental Brief.